Hello, my name is Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX, and I'm going to interview today Angela Strand of Workhorse. We're in the space of vehicles here and some unusual ones. So could you fill us in briefly, Angela, about what Workhorse does? Sure, Peter, thank you mm. so much. So Workhorse is an American technology and OEM company that is focused on e-mobility uh, and specifically commercial electric vehicles and changing the way the world works. That means all electric and range extended electric trucks as well as aircraft. I think trucks are the biggest polluters in America, aren't they? People think of cars. They are. Mm. So, so uh, diesel and gas trucks, particularly those involved in urban environments, are the largest contributors to air pollution, uh, upwards of 80%. Indeed. And so you're not doing the regular diesel trucks. Obviously, diesel are increase, is increasingly going to be constrained or banned or have to at least become very expensive with extras on it because of pollution. Uh, but um, with the range extenders, some people like Mac working with right speed and some other people working with capstone turbine, they're using essentially jet engines instead of a regular diesel. What, what is your range extender for the truck? Is it a, a diesel or, or what? We have a partnership with BMW oh. and utilize the same gen set that they use in their i3 and i9 vehicles oh. Oh. to recharge the batteries to extend the range of the vehicle. Oh, right. The i3 is, is a two-cylinder engine, I think, from one of their scooters or something, isn't it? That's quite yes. small. Yes. Do you go that small? No, the, no. the vehicles that we primarily yeah. manufacture are technically called medium duty. Yeah. So if you think about any anything in size from a transit van right. to a UPS or a FedEx size truck. It's more like the I-8, Correct. somewhat bigger. And yeah. the genset is really, uh, the size of the genset is uh, really custom tailored to the application. And so our philosophy on range extension is that it's like an insurance policy because for most of these applications oh, with okay. fleets, yeah. they, they travel the same distance yeah. every day. Yeah. They start and stop at the depot at night. Yeah. But in certain instances, like for instance, we'll start what's called peak season yeah. for parcel delivery right after yeah, Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah, yeah. where you have extended hours. Right. That In that instance, the range extender is a very cost-effective option yeah. to allow fleets to extend the range for specific and discrete periods of time throughout the year. Well, that's interesting because the i3, I always think of it as a life belt. I mean, that's really a get you home range extender. You're not supposed to use it. It's, it's there for, for sort of uh, range anxiety, really. Yes. Uh, uh, but other range in, in extenders get yes, used rather more. So it's sort of a spectrum of application, I suppose. So uh, the uniques of those vehicles are uh, what? Are, are, are you a major player or a minor player? Or what? So we are very well positioned in the U.S. market mm. because we develop and manufacture our vehicles from the ground up. And historically in this segment of the market, a lot of the alternative energy electric vehicle makers are conversion companies, meaning they purchase the diesel chassis, yeah. they remove the components, and then they put the electric componentry right. in. Yeah, yeah. For us, because we are now moving to scale and we mm. have a full manufacturing facility in Indiana, which can produce up to 60,000 vehicles a year, right. we're able to really leverage tier one suppliers, mm. design from the ground up, and we're very well positioned with large, especially large global fleets like UPS and others to mm. be able to produce at a very uh, competitively priced point. Oh, right. So these, are these mainly cities to city vehicles rather than center of the town ones? You know, like the UPS would have pure electric ones, wouldn't it, for yes. the local, but you don't do those. We do, you actually. We do do those. We do. Ah, right. Our sweet spot for delivery vehicles and work vans is primarily urban use. All oh, right. So the av on, for instance, if, mm. if I'm delivering packages as an independent supplier mm. for Amazon, mm. I show up at work at the depot at 7 a.m., mm. load my packages, probably drive 10 to 12 miles mm. before I start delivering, make 200 stops, deliver 300 packages, and okay. then come back to base. And they're brilliant for the stop-start compared with the diesel. Brilliant. Yes, I, I had a bit of a laugh on me in London the other day. I was taking a picture of a UPS battery uh, 
big, big battery van and I just looked down to fiddle with my camera on my phone and I looked up and it had gone and I hadn't, hear it, <laughs> I hadn't heard it go, so I didn't get my photograph. But yeah, they're coming in very fast, I think. Now, I think you, you have other things you do. Are you involved in yes. aircraft or something? Tell us do. Yes. So the same foundational technologies mm battery systems, motor controls, and software are really a platform that can be applied both to vehicles as well as aerospace. Right. And so we've established a uh, what will be a standalone company called Surefly, ah. which is our electric vertical takeoff and landing helicopter, or right. EVTOL. Right. And in that instance, helicopters uh, are inherently unsafe. They don't have redundancy systems. Yeah. And so by utilizing this range extended, or in this case, hybrid electric approach, ah. using a gas generator with all electric backup and a ballistic parachute, we believe we can create the safest, easiest to fly helicopter on the planet. And that's autonomous with no one in it. It's for deliveries or something. So the uh, payload is 400 pounds. Right. So two people or one person plus cargo. The initial range estimate is 70 miles. And in terms of the uh, pilot versus non-pilot, the initial version that we're taking through FAA certification now mm. will have a pilot. Wow. But ultimately, it's mm. fly-by-wire, so we have the option either. to move to autonomous. Oh. I see. So uh, do you think that will be safe in cities? You'd need longer, the, the, that range is before you use the range extender or with the range extender? So to clarify, in this yeah. instance, yeah. the gas generator powers the vehicle. Yeah. So there is no range extender. Oh, and, right. And so the, app, the early applications yeah. and yeah. interest that we have from customers yeah. are really in yeah. agriculture, yeah. certainly the military, yeah. in more rural instances yeah. where yeah. you don't have the option no, no, absolutely. to fly. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I think yeah. it will be yeah. some time Certainly, Uber yeah. Elevate is leading the consortium mm. of yeah. thinking and imagining urban transit, yes. but that will take some time. Yes, we worry a little bit about some of these proposals, like in Dubai, they say they're bringing in um, taxis, um, uh, they sometimes call them flying cars or whatever they are, but yes. the point is they're vertical takeoff, and they seem to have an endurance of only about 30 minutes, and so the safety margin is wafer thin over a city. I would be very surprised if a city would allow such a thing. I think, you know, it's back to the drawing board. They need to get a bit better than that to be allowed in a city. They might have to have proper safety margins, and maybe range extenders there can be the safety margin or something. But in the meantime, we, where we had here last year, Terrafugia are up opening and shutting their yes. folding wings of the, the car. But of course, it's, it's an internal combustion engine. It has to be. You're talking about half a megawatt or a megawatt. Or, That's right. And in that case, it's not even vertical takeoff, but it's, it's a very neat device. So um, how do you see the company going in future? You're, you're on the land and you're in the air, but you're not off-road. Correct. Yeah. So the next one to three years on the vehicle side, uh, next year is really about the release of our next generation work van, which we call the NGen series. And we have, we are one of the five finalists for the U.S. Postal Service ah, Next Generation Vehicle yeah. Delivery Program. So yeah. we're active in that space yeah. with the smallest cube. And then we have multiple sizes yeah. that will be applied and uh, are of interest to a number of different fleets. They're yeah. operating, whether it's a Ford Transit or, or a Sprinter van or yeah. some of the larger, heavier duty vans. And that's yeah. really the next step. Right. Following that, we have also a range extended electric pickup truck, half ton, okay. that has received quite a bit of interest ah, from right. particularly fleets working in yeah. the utility sector and yeah. also construction. Yeah. And we've, we've to date, we have uh, almost $300 million in letters of interest pre orders. That's for interesting, that vehicle. yes. So I know utilities often want power when they arrive, so the beauty of a hybrid compared with a pure electric is that. You, you've got yourself an electricity generator when you arrive Absolutely. to do whatever you're going to do. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we've we've incorporated a lot of features that are really focused on commercial and fleet use, yes, including yeah, exportable yeah. power. Yeah. So seven point two kW, you can plug in your tools or your generator. Yeah. Oh uh, right. So, oh. so we have that as a feature, and the range mm. extender on this particular vehicle is quite is larger. Yes. Because what we heard, so for instance, a utility in this country, maybe two hundred and fifty days out of the year they're only operating and driving 60 miles a day. Ah. But if you're going to disaster relief yeah. for hurricanes or other natural yeah. disasters, you need to be able to drive across the country. And so this particular yeah. range extender will be large enough. So the first 75 to 80 miles will be all electric. Ah. And then you can continue to fill the gas tank yeah, yeah. on the range extender yeah. and have unlimited yeah. range yeah. to complete your mission. Superb. So your, your advantages are in design and you're also able to expand your business by selling powertrains. Yes. Uh, what does that mean? Boats or what? <laughs> well, at this moment, we're, we're sticking to trucks. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned the Surefly. Yeah. We're planning on spinning that out yeah. as a separate business right. because it does merit its own yeah. team. Yeah. And there are certain sets of investors that are particularly interested right. in that space. Mm -hmm. And so for now, we have our hands full and there's yes, yes. hundreds of millions of dollars no, of market wonderful. opportunity in, yeah. in, the, in that space. So in all, between the different sites, how many people roughly? Um, sorry, to clarify, how many, yeah. how many sites? How many employees have oh, you I'm got? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, people. Uh, so we have mm. approximately 150 employees. Okay. And yeah. that includes manufacturing. Yeah. And we will scale up over so time. So it's mainly in Indiana? Uh, it's principally actually right outside of Cincinnati in Loveland, ah, Ohio. All right. And then we have a, a small team for mm. manufacturing assembly in Indiana. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Very exciting. An interesting thank company you. up and coming. Starting to worry the big people, I think. <laughs> and, well, let's uh, hope so. I wish you well. So thank you very much. Thank Fascinating you so much, information. Peter. See you again. Such a pleasure. See you again. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.